Square Enix has released not one, but two new Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers, showcasing just how far the sequel has come along in development, as well as introducing a new world in Monsters, Inc. These trailers are packed to the brim with new gameplay and story details that are worth exploring, so let's dive into the heart of these new glimpses. The main D23 2018 trailer kicks off with the surprising reintroduction of Marluxia, the former leader of Organization 13 while they were stationed at Castle Oblivion. Sora battled and defeated the nobody Marluxia back in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, but because he, Donald, and Goofy had the memories of their time in Castle Oblivion wiped, Marluxia is a total mystery to him. It's unclear exactly how he has returned, likely as part of Xehanort's adventures through time and space to form the true Organization 13, but he's back with a vengeance and his memories fully intact. But the centerpiece of the trailer is undoubtedly the reveal of the previously leaked Monsters, Inc. world. Sora, Donald, and Goofy all get awesome monster transformations. It's unclear exactly when in the universe the story of this world takes place, but it's pretty likely in the midst of the original movie and possibly right after. The monster factory is still scaring because it cares, but later in the trailer, a gauge for Boo's laugh power appears, indicating the monsters learn the power of laughs at some point in the level. Our first look at gameplay in the Monsters, Inc. world confirms a nice touch we haven't seen yet in Cage 3 footage. World-themed command menus. Yes, it's a small thing, but seeing the command menu change to fit the aesthetic of each world in past games has been a delightful little touch. It's nice to see it return in every world teased in both trailers, and maybe an indication of just how far along development is. Atop the Monster Factory is where we also see this world's Keyblade for the first time. You'll notice the end of the blade is wearing a monster helmet, while the charm appears to be Boo in her monster costume. It is freaking adorable. Speaking of that Keyblade, we also get to see two transformations for it in this trailer. The first is Quick Claws, in which the Keyblade splits into two metal chompers on Sora's hands. Much later in the trailer, we also see the Twin Yo-Yo's transformation, which also splits the Keyblade into a dual set of weapons. With both of these transformations, Sora's grayish blue fur transforms into an orangey shading with pink highlights. What's interesting is that Sora is fighting with each respective world's Keyblade within that world. Normally, Keyblades were world completion gifts. Sora seemingly receives new Keyblades at or near the start of these levels, which ties into just how important the new gameplay variations for each Keyblade seem to be in their respective worlds. One small thing to note about the battle footage seen throughout the trailer. The MP orbs are no longer clear as they were in Kingdom Hearts 2, but this will be unsurprising to anyone who played through 0.2 A Fragmentary Passage. Aqua's magic orbs in that game were also a richer shade of blue. Getting back to Monsters, Inc., the Pixar film's iconic doors return in Kingdom Hearts, though it's unclear if Sora will actually get to hop through to different locations using them. Whether or not he actually does, there's no doubting the cavernous scale of the Monsters, Inc. world is impressive and an indication of truly just how big each new world is. And on the subject of these new worlds, though we first saw Tangled's Land of Corona back in 2015, we finally have our first look at Rapunzel and Flynn Rider. Rapunzel, unsurprisingly, uses her hair for combat and traversal, while Flynn can be seen both using a frying pan and a barrel mid-battle. There's also a brief look at the Tangled Keyblade, which appears to be in the shape of Rapunzel's tower. That Keyblade also goes through a transformation into the Mirage Staff, which we get a much better look of in the second D23 trailer. Much like Sora's fur changing in the Monsters, Inc. world, his outfit also changes color in Corona when he takes on the new Keyblade form. One of the coolest aspects of the trailer, though, is look at the game's first summon ability, Ariel. Past Kingdom Hearts games largely just replicated the look of a Disney character and had them appear in battle, but Ariel's summon is a gorgeous take on the mechanic. Ariel melds with the water, which cascades around Sora like a tornado. It's awesome, and I hope is an indication of unique summons throughout the sequel, though this also may indicate Atlantica likely isn't going to be revealed as a world this time around. The trailer also hops back into the world of Toy Story, which most interestingly showcases a seeming boss battle in the world. Based on its health meter, I'd estimate this is one of the earlier worlds in the game, but the battle still looks appropriately epic. It has both day and night phases, and is an awesome blend of platforming and situation-specific attacks, and has a design that looks more fantastical than anything we've seen in that level so far. One quick return to the world of Monsters, Inc. shows off the return of Dream Eaters, summonable creatures who appeared in Kingdom Hearts' Dream Drop Distance. How exactly they'll factor into the gameplay is unclear. There isn't a summoning prompt that appears on screen yet, but they only add to the incredible variety of combat featured in these trailers so far. 
The trailer ends on yet another surprising return, Vanitas. Long story short, Vanitas is a being formed from the darkness of Ventus, a Keyblade warrior from Birth by Sleep, whose heart rests inside Sora's body. It gets complicated, I know. Ven's soul seemingly recognizes Vanitas, who Sora has not met before, but the villainous character appears to be yet another member of Xehanort's true organization. Vanitas created the Unversed, Birth by Sleep's enemies, which accounts for their appearance in the Monsters, Inc. world. Now, let's hop back into the second trailer, which highlights Yutada Hikaru's new theme song. The trailer showcases footage from Mount Olympus, which is almost identical to the footage from the E3 Orchestra 2017 trailer. It's important to note Sora now appears in his KH2 outfit here, and Hercules is not in your party while diving in, while he was in that previous trailer. Last but not least, one final story tease. Riku and Mickey appear in the Realm of Darkness's most visited beachside spot, sporting their new duds likely given to them by Yen Sid in the 2.9 cutscene featured in 0.2 A Fragmentary Passage. Riku and Mickey are on the hunt for Aqua. They likely just finished a massive battle too, because Riku's Keyblade, the Way to the Dawn, is now broken. But rather than fully retiring it, he leaves it in case my other me needs it. There's no indication of who the other me is, though my money isn't on the Riku replica featured in Chain of Memories. That character, though he played an important part in that game's narrative, hasn't really been a key player in the series' overall mythology. We likely won't find out who exactly that is until Kingdom Hearts 3 is released later this year. But until then, be sure to check out our analysis of recent Kingdom Hearts 3 rumors and our breakdown of last year's D23 trailer. And for all things Kingdom Hearts, keep your key locked right here on IGN.